Do you ever catch yourself where you're a little bit nervous to present a sales pitch? Or maybe you find yourself a little bit nervous or anxious before you go into a series of outbound dialing or maybe even plug in your, your phone into the dialer to where you're receiving inbounds. You know, whether you're an inside sales agent or outside sales agent, I believe it's common for all of us in sales to kind of get this, uh, this hint of anxiety right before we go into a session of originating sales. And since originating sales is a very important part of the sales process, you got to continuously feed the machine. I think it's important for you to, to really, number one, understand that you should be spending close to half your day, if not half or more than half of your day, constantly originating sales. And what that entails is outbound or inbound solicitations, right? So whether you're presenting a sales pitch or you're going into a series of, of, of outbound dials and cold calling, I need you to understand one thing is that it's natural to fear a little bit of anxiety. It's natural to be fearful, especially if you're just beginning. So inside this video, I'm going to share with you a couple helpful ways to remove the fear from selling. because. Whether you accept it or not, whether you call it fear, whether you call it nervousness, whether you call it anxiety, whether you call it anxiousness, whatever you call it, it's your mindset and it's the way you view it. And so I'm gonna share with you a couple helpful hacks on how to remove that fear from your sales. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a very helpful way to remove the fear, the sense of fear, the sense of anxiety, and the sense of helplessness before you get into your sales origination calls or your maybe even sales pitch. And you know, the reason why I brought up this topic was because I was asked by somebody who said, you know, every time I get into a sales environment, it just turns into a debate and doesn't really go anywhere. And I found myself in that position too, where I used to just go into a sales pitch and it almost became like a debate, like I was arguing with my spouse, like I was arguing with my friend. And all it was was about me one-upping the competition or one-upping that person. And it got to a point where I was almost kind of antagonizing and more or less kind of demeaning that person. And it took me a while to really understand why I was coming from that place. And it, and it mainly had to do with this, is that in order to remove your fear from selling or originating sales is you have to change the way you view it. You have to change your, your perception of selling. And I said it before and I'm going to say it again. You have to look at it as helping, as serving. And so if you think about it, like if, let's say you had to ask somebody uh, for something. And that one thing was likely, the likelihood of them turning you down for that one thing was pretty high because maybe it, maybe it required their investment or their monetary uh, sacrifice, right? Like they had to buy something or they had to go, you know, uh, above and beyond in order to do that one thing for you. So the likelihood of them doing it is probably very slim. So you may be approaching it as, oh man, I got to sell this person to do that one thing. Or I got to sell this person, they're not going to want to do it because of this, that, and this. And so we're kind of what, what, what I call anchoring, we're anchoring our thoughts and our intentions based on that one objection. Whereas if we looked at it as like, you know what, I'm gonna help this person, so I'm gonna find the upside for this person to do that one thing, and even if it causes them to spend money or causes them to invest time, I'm actually going to help them because here is their upside, A, B, and C. And so now I'm anchored in a different way and I see how I'm actually helping that person. So the next time you go into a series of outbound origination or the next time you prepare your sales pitch, instead of looking at it at a way where, oh man, this person is going to object or they're not going to want this and they're not going to want that. You know, I need you to look at it in a different way and say, well, what would happen if they didn't buy? What would happen if they, you know, passed up on these savings and didn't take this opportunity that's right before them and when you look at it in that way your whole perspective changes so instead of just being focused on the objections and actually attracting them into the conversation you do that when you when you just focus on the bad right you really do focus like on the the bad intentions of that call and so you're actually bringing them out because you're influencing and suggesting the specific questions that they should be asking <laughs> it sounds a little weird but Trust me, if you try this, 
uh, before you go into your outbound sales origination. Like, let's start there, right? So right before we go into making outbound calls, we have different ways and methods to get ourselves hypey, to get ourselves pumped and motivated. You know, me, I love music, so I'll put on some, you know, some focus music, maybe some dead mouse, or maybe, you know, something that's fast paced, or something that, that reminds me of dancing, right? Because I wanna be in a good mood. I need it to come in out of my tone and, and change my energy. And so that would put me in a state and the reason why I would do that is because when I'm in that state, I'm confident, I'm, I'm optimistic, I'm positive. But, but then again, there's some other people who don't use music to get in that state. Instead, what they use is their thoughts. They use their thoughts and maybe they do positive self-affirmations like, I'm a win today, I'm a winner, I'm going I'm to close somebody, I'm going to sell somebody. And I need you to pay attention to that way because that way is how you warm yourself up. And so I think we anchor ourselves. And I'm going to use this word again, anchoring. For those of you who don't understand what anchoring is, we anchor ourselves and our momentum to a specific emotion. So let's say if we're going into a series of outbound calls and cold calling, we may anchor our view on that particular task by saying, man, it, it, no one's going to want to buy. I'm, I've already anchored the result to, to my energy and my, my enthusiasm. Does that make sense? Or say, man, the market's up. No one's going to want to do a rate and term. I've already anchored myself to be negative and to expect a fight. Or, or if I even, just even the word tracking, it said, you know what, I'm going to fight for a couple apps. And that's my choice of words. I need to recognize that I'm already coming from a place of defense, right? So, so pay attention to your word tracking, pay attention to the way you use your words because the way you use your words are the way that you outfit your emotion. It's basically the, the state of the emotion that you're in and when you're going in to a sales call or a sales origination call or a sales pitch, the last thing you wanna be is in a state of, of, of defense where you feel like you gotta battle through it because when you get into that mind state, you're actually looking at your customer as an opponent like you gotta you gotta beat them <laughs> no no boo boo you gotta actually help them and so when you come at come at it from that point of view where you're actually serving them the solution that they need to enhance the quality of their lifestyle you now come from a different state where you're not worried about the objections because you understand how it helps them and so here's a hack that next time when you come together with a uh, or when you come into a series of, of cold calling or, or series of, of origination and sales pitching, what I want to do is I want to prepare you with this very helpful tool that I call trickled benefit. Trickled benefit is, think of it as a stack of benefits, right? So I'll use benefits that you're familiar with. Um, debt consolidation, payment savings, uh, FICO rehabilitation, equity building, wealth planning, wealth creation. So these are, are stacks of benefits, but you have to align it based on that particular person. The reason why this is helpful is because trickled benefits will help you take back control of the conversation. It will help you influence to get more attention so that you're not fearful of objections. The only reason why you're fearful of objections is because your perception of it is it's going to end that conversation. You're going to waste your time. Get out of that state and understand that if you have a solution to the objection, you can continue influencing that attention to drive closer to that sales pitch and thus close that pitch. So let me give you an example of how it would work. A triggered benefit is like a chain reaction from the initial benefit. So the initial benefit, for example, could be something as common as a payment deferral or an escrow refund, or a payment savings of $100, right? So let me show you how it works. So, so the, the, this process will help you save 100 bucks and free up a deferred mortgage payment and an escrow refund. With that money, you can use to pay off these other debts and turn that 100 into $500 in month-to-month -month savings. That $500 a month will not only help you improve your FICO score, but it will help you replenish the lost money that you've depleted from your checking and savings. By giving yourself this much cash flow, you can build six months of living expenses and focus your time and energy on other things that you want rather than living check to check and building high accruing interest credit card debt that's revolving and building daily on compounding interest. You see, what I found, does that make sense? So, Everything was how it trickled down and created in this kind of snowball effect. 
And it's important for you to start practicing that because when you get into the sales pitch and you get these objections, you're gonna need to repound that trickled benefit at least two or three times and it becomes that thing. What you might look at it is it's that carrot, that carrot that you dangle in front of them in order to influence them to do the things that they may not wanna do, like buy, like, like hurry up and give you what you need, hurry up and give you that credit card, hurry up and commit, hurry up and, and make a decision. It's all gonna be based on that trickle benefit. Now here's why the trickle benefit works, is because the trickle benefit only works if it's tailored to them using words that they use. And so this is why you can't go into it in a defensive state because if you go into it in a defensive state, all you're thinking about are words that you need to say in order to convince them to buy. But if you go into that state or you go into that call block, you go into that pitch with the intent to help and serve, you're going to listen to them. So right from the very beginning, if you're going in, in with a positive state of mind with the intent to help and serve, you're going to pick up on things like words that they say you're gonna be more open-minded. You're not gonna to be too, your, your, your thoughts will not be clouded, worried about the objections that haven't even happened yet because you believe that the market is up and you are the one that saw that rate sheet and you are the one that uh, maybe went through a series of bad calls, right? This person don't know you, boo-boo. They don't know what you just went through. They don't know what objections to ask because you're the one guiding the motherfucking shit. So I need you to understand that when you get into that positive state of mind, and you look at things in a little bit different light, you can give yourself the upper hand so that you can take control of the conversation and use it to manufacture your own trickled benefits. And when you start to get the hang of this, you're gonna be able to see that you're going to run across less friction naturally because your tonality is not coming from a defensive state of mind. Your tonality is coming from a place of good intent. And they could read it through your tonality, they can read it through your energy just like you're reading it through mine right now. You see, I believe that we have this ability to control another person's emotional state. And that is why I'm very effective in sales because selling is the ability to transfer an emotional state into somebody like I've just transferred an emotional state into you. Now my only hope is that I've sold you enough to practice these habits because if you look at a sales process or a sales pitch with fear, man, you're gonna have a tough time in this industry, boo-boo. You're gonna have a tough time making the money that you need to reap the benefits of being in sales. It's just gonna be a constant grind, it's gonna be a constant worry, and it's bad for your health. Get yourself to a confident level. Start following Sales Remastered on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and all the platforms that you're already on. Add me on your LinkedIn feed. Visit me and, and, and join me on every Thursday on the Breakfast of Champions happening every Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, being played live. Go check out the videos and the plethora, the plethora, the plethora of content I've already accumulated on both Facebook and YouTube because the chances are you're probably already there on a daily basis anyway, boo-boo. So go check it out. Let me know what you think. Hit the subscription, hit that bell so you get the notifications of when I go live, you get the notifications of any content that I post up. And feed your brain, man. Feed your brain with the stuff that you need, not the negative influence around you from the people that don't have the stuff that they need. And give yourself that advantage to earn the bucks that you need. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, let me know what your two cents are, share the link of this video, but every video that you see, man, like it, comment, and share it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.